page gp authentication is a combination of sha1 and rsa which provides an effective digital signature scheme because of the strength of rsa the recipient is assured that only the professor of the matching private key can generate the signature because of the strength of sha1 the recipient is assured that no one else could generate a new message that matches the hash code and hence the signature of the original message as an alternative signatures can be generated using dss sha1 although signatures normally are found attached to the message or file that they sign this is not always the case detached signatures are supported a detached signature may be stored and transmitted separately from the message it signs this is useful in several contexts a user may wish to maintain a separate signature log of all the messages sent or received a detached signature of an executable program can detect subsequent virus infection finally detached signatures can be used when more than one party must sign a document such as such as a legal contract each person's signature is independent and therefore is applied only to the document otherwise signatures would have to be nested with the second signer signing both the document and the first signature and so on pgp confidentiality provided by encrypting the messages to be transmitted or to be stored locally as files in both the cases the symmetric encryption algorithm cast 128 may be used alternatively idea or triple dash may be used in pgp each symmetric key is used only once although it is referred to as a session key it is in reality a one time key session key is bound to the message and transmitted with a net to protect the key it is encrypted with the receiver's public key so that the receiver the authenticated receiver only can decrypt it because he is the only person with his private key the pgp confidentiality is another basic service provided by the pgp and the figure to achieve the same is as shown above to protect the key it is encrypted with the receiver's public key and the figure illustrates the sequence which is as follows the sender generates a message and a random 128 bit number to be used as a session key for this message only the message is then encrypted using cast 128 or idea or triple dash with the session key the session key is encrypted with rsa using the recipient's public key and is prepended to the message the receiver uses the rsa with its private key to decrypt and recover the session key the session key is used to decrypt the message as an alternative to the use of rsa for key encryption pgp provides an option referred to as diffie hellman in fact the pgp uses a variant of diffie hellman that does provide encryption decryption known as lgml several abbreviations were made first of it is to reduce the encryption time the combination of symmetric and public key encryption is used in preference to simply using rsa or lgml to encrypt the messages directly cast 128 and other symmetric algorithms are substantially faster than that of rsa or lgml the second one being the use of public key algorithm solves the session key distribution problem because only the recipient is able to recover the session key that is bound to the message note that we do not need a session key exchange protocol 
for the type discussed. Rather, each message is a one-time independent event with its own key. Furthermore, given the store and forward nature of electronic mail, the use of handshaking to assure that both the sides have the same session key is not practical. Finally, the use of one-time symmetric keys strengthens what is already a strong symmetric encryption approach. Only a small amount of plain text is encrypted with each key and there is no relationship among the keys. Thus, to the extent that the public key encryption algorithm is secure, the entire scheme is secure. To this end, PGP provides the user with a range of key size options from 768 to 3072 bits. The DSS key for signatures is limited to 1024 bits. The PGP confidentiality combined with authentication. Here, the sender first signs the message with his own private key, then encrypts the message with the session key, and finally encrypts the session key with the recipient's public key, thus achieving both confidentiality also and authentication also, which can be visualized as, as shown in the figure. The PGP confidentiality and authentication can be achieved as illustrated. Both the services may be used for the same message. First, a signature is generated for the plain text message and prepended to the message. Then, the plain text message plus the signature is encrypted using, say, CAST128 or IDEA or triple DES and the session key is encrypted using the RSA or LGAML. This sequence is preferable to the opposite. Encrypting the message and then generating the signature for the encrypted message. It is generally more convenient to store a signature with a plain text version of a message. Furthermore, for purposes of third-party verification, if the signature is performed first, a third party need not be concerned with the symmetric key when verifying the signature. In summary, when both services are used, the sender first signs the message with his own private key, then encrypts the message with a session key, and finally encrypts the session key with recipient's public key. PGP compression As a default, PGP compresses the message after applying the signature but before encryption. This has the benefit of saving space both for email transmission and for file storage. The placement of compression algorithm is critical. The signature is generated before compression of for two reasons. It is preferable to sign an uncompressed message so that one can store only the uncompressed message together with the signature for future verification. If one signed a compressed document, then it would be necessary either to store a compressed version of the message for later verification or to compress the message when verification is required. Even if one were willing to generate dynamically a recompressed message for verification, PGP's compression algorithm presents a difficulty. The algorithm is not deterministic. Various implementations of algorithm achieve different trade-offs in running speed versus compression ratio and, as a result, produce different compressed forms. However, these different compression algorithms are interoperable because any version of algorithm can correctly decompress the output of any other version. Applying the hash function and signature after compression would constrain all PGP implementations to the same version of compression algorithm. Message encryption is applied after compression to strengthen cryptographic security. Because the compressed message has less redundancy than the original plain text, crypt analysis is more difficult. The compression algorithm used is the ZIP, ZIP. 
PGP email compatibility. When PGP is used, at least part of the block to be transmitted is encrypted. If only the signature service is used, then the message digest is encrypted with the sender's private key. If the confidentiality service is used, then the message plus signature, if present, are encrypted with one-time symmetric key. Thus, part of all the resulting block consists of a stream of arbitrary 8-bit octets. However, many electronic mail systems only permit the use of blocks consisting of ASCII text. To accommodate this restriction, PGP provides the service of converting the raw 8-bit binary stream to a stream of printable ASCII characters. The scheme used for this purpose is Radix 64 conversion. Each group of three octets of binary data is mapped into four ASCII characters. This format also appends a CRC to detect transmission errors. The use of Radix 64 expands a message by 33%. Fortunately, the session key and the signature portions of the message are relatively compact and the plain text message has been compressed. In fact, the compression, the compression should be more than enough to compensate for the Radix 64 expansion. One noteworthy aspect of Radix 64 algorithm is that it blindly converts the input stream to Radix 64 format regardless of the content. Even if the input happens to be ASCII text, thus if the message is signed but not encrypted and the conversion is applied to the entire block, the output will be unreadable to the casual observer, which provides a certain level of confidentiality. As an option, PGP can be configured to convert to Radix 64 format only with signature portion of the signed plain text. Transmission and Reception of PGP Messages The figure shows the relationship among the four services discussed so far. On transmission, if it is required, a signature is generated using a hash code of the uncompressed plain text. Then the plain text plus the signature, if present, is compressed. Next, if the confidentiality is required, the block, that is, the compressed plain text or compressed signature plus plain text is encrypted and prepended with the public key encrypted symmetric encryption key. Finally, the entire block is converted to Radix 64 format. On reception, the incoming block is first converted back from Radix 64 format to binary. Then, if the message is encrypted, the recipient recovers the session key and decrypts the message. The resulting block is then decompressed. If the message is signed, the recipient recovers the transmitted hash code and compares it to its own calculation of hash code.